What are we doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> uh, I mean, I was thinking about eating some Vienna sausages. But I don't have, uh, I don't have fingernails. That is the sound of happiness right there. I had a roommate in Abilene in school that um, called him Vienna Wieners, but he had a really like Texas accent, so that's how he said Fanny Wieners. All right, let's go to the crib. My five, five, nine, Drink enough to kill yourself in time Between this avenue And holding your breath For me to come around And wish you the best The album itself is called Work in Progress. Most of the songs we've been sitting on and rewriting and editing for the last, what, three years, probably? You know, we needed the right people as well involved with it. We waited for forever. We did. At least what felt like eternity to find the right people. And yeah. then, um, actually in the transition, we wrote them, and then we moved to Dallas, and uh, not all of us were here at the same time. And so it was a absolute pain and also getting us all together to do stuff it's like hurting cats yeah and then on top of all of that there's the COVID-19 stuff and so our drummer is in complete isolation he got off a cruise ship like right before all the shit went yeah. down yeah and, and so he was like ooh yeah they were just like yeah we're, we're just gonna like hole up in our house and not talk to anyone for a long time yeah so, so lead guy Danny is um, not able to come out he's in isolation as well yeah what was Chris doing? Uh, crit. Isolating. <laughs> yeah, he's a, we're pretty much all doing that. Uh, we recorded with Eric Jones and Johnny Gore. Uh, they're in the band Words. They're uh, formerly least of these. You know, Jonesy and Johnny were really just like, oh no, dude, I know exactly what you're doing and I want to help you get there. And that was kind of a big selling point for us, wanting to work with them. Yeah. It's also Honey Gold Records. Oh, yeah. And they're really hands-on, which is super tight. And it's actually our first time working with a, a label. Really our first time working with anyone outside of ourselves, and it's been a super oh, awesome it's been partnership. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've done so much for us. Like, recording, I've talked to a, a lot of bands that they've just been like, oh, man, recording is such a pressure. Like, there's time crunches or stuff like that. There's, We have so much pressure on. There was no pressure whatsoever. Like, we, we went in, we did our shit, we had some fun. Like... They'd even just be like, hey, you want to take a lunch break? Just walk down to the sub place down here, like, all the time. And it was, it was great. Yeah, it was like, it was, it was the least stressful recording experience I've ever had. And I absolutely hate recording. He does. Absolutely That's very hate true. hate recording. A lot of our plan has been around just get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. And now, I think in some regard, we're sitting here like, okay, what next? Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been awful. Because, yeah, it's just like waiting. And like in the process, especially in the quarantine, like we're, we're so we live together, so we're, no, but we're, we're constantly no. writing to begin with. And so basically we've written more, what, an EP, we've almost written an entire full length album while we're waiting on this. I've written like six demos in the past week and a half. Yeah, and then we had new shit. other ones on top of that. And so we're just like, cool. I guess the goal is to just see what it does and play new places and start promoting it and start focusing on the next phase of punks, but I really don't. <laughs> Did you really just... Nice! <laughs> I can't throw balls, but I can <laughs> skip rocks. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's specifically about um, politicians that are quote-unquote pro-life that uh, are warmongers and profit off of war. You know, Dick Cheney and Halliburton and uh, all those those stuff. The big businesses that, that profit off of war, uh, all the major firearms manufacturers that have contracts with the governments. And Essentially, it's kind of a shot at those who choose to feed the machine with human life. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're, they're like, but at the same time, they're like, oh, but, you know, we can't give people, you know, we can't let healthcare them choose an abortion rights. or health care for everyone and stuff like that, where it's like, okay, you, you can kill people, but you want them to be born first, but also only American 
lives. Well, only American babies matter. Yeah, we're still like, carpet bombing, you know, other countries and, and collateral damage. But as long as American lives, or as long as American babies are still born, but once they're born, we're not going to help take care of them. Yeah, because God loves them more. Somehow. Yeah. You can have everything correct, and you could be, you know, pious in your life, but you know, when when judgment comes, God will be like, I never knew you. It's like you can have that facade. You can have be like pro life. It's like so the first like uh, lines like warmonger. I never knew you, and it's because it's talking about like what it should be versus what it is. So it, it essentially came out of a lot of frustration and a lot of documentaries concerning the Iraq War and uh, military contractors. Yeah. <laughs> Expression is, that's one of the various things that you're going to express, are your political opinions and, you know, injustice and stuff like that. So, like, while talking about, you know, women and heartbreak, or men, whatever. Whatever you relate to. And my dad's like, <laughs> but, uh, I knew it! <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure he's women, got money on women. that. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's the cool thing about music, is, like, you can convey any message whatsoever like you've got five different dudes in the band and not one of us believes exactly the same thing like no. there's stuff eric and i disagree on pretty heavily there's stuff danny and i disagree on there's stuff chris and eric will disagree on. like everyone like a lot of the traps that bands get into a lot of times that you have to f have five carbon copies of the same dude yeah and it has to fit a certain mold and then you fit it all yourself yeah. and then you become christian contemporary music I started writing, uh, I was just thinking about like how people, they hide, they, especially like in current church culture, like they, they really hide everything and then they don't feel comfortable even where they're supposed to feel the most comfortable to let that out and it's fucking annoying, it's yeah. stupid, but uh, um, yeah and so I was just like oh this is kind of cool and then I was like wait, we could totally rip off we're so far away by May. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he came into my room one day and was like, hey, I have an idea. What can you do with it? And I was like, what do you got? Some of these songs were written three years ago, uh, and they've been heavily edited ever since, but even then, you think of what three years does, like, if you were to look at yourself and ask, am I the same person as I was three years ago, I defy you to find someone who is exactly the same as they were three years ago, even if it's been negative change. There, there's so much beauty in listening to the entire story rather than just a part. premise besides behind punk and hardcore is you know you're ostracized by society you're weird like if you listen to music where they yell at you you're not right in the head like, yeah, like, like i want to need, listen to someone yelling at me that's yeah, not like, you my need, dad like you, you know like, people think you need therapy for that shit yeah exactly right. and so like you're already you're already going somewhere where it's a bunch of weirdos together you need to be felt you need to feel like you're welcome yeah. and so that that's the biggest the biggest point is to make everyone feel welcome and to feel loved and to feel like because like it, for most people going to a show is therapy for us it's therapy to play especially like, growing up where we did where there was much more of a subculture because like you know he grew up in midland texas i grew up in abilene and it's pretty much all church all the time there's a church on every corner and a lot of churches don't really get what we do so going to shows was kind of like my escape from it. And then coming out here, it was even more so. You know, that's why a lot of guys in our scene are going crazy right now, just due to their art shows. And they're just like, what do I do? Just sit around my house and read a book or something? The entire premise is work in progress. Like that's the, the title track is, is called work in progress. And so is the EP. And it's like, we are, that's what we are as people. We're bro broken pieces, and you're putting yourself back together. 
and it's not easy for a lot of people. And then if you, on top of that, if you have, you know, a chemical imbalance in your brain that you can't help, it just makes everything 10 times more difficult. Or if your brain is battling itself with an anxiety disorder and you're just like, even the smallest thing you overreact or it makes you panic, it's really hard to do the rest of life. Mental health needs to be treated like physical yeah. health. Yeah. We, so, um, we also both grew up in pretty heavy church environments and a big strife I've had with the church over the past several years has been they don't really address mental health and when they do, it's pray it away or if you have anxiety, it's your fault and your faith isn't strong enough. And that's, that's just bullshit, like, honestly. You could have science in Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> in fact, like, everyone's... Everyone's like, we should not trust our own brains and just trust in God. I'm just like, who gave us the brain? <laughs> who still gave us the brain? Our best memories aren't even from shows. It's just us shooting the shit on Mason's back porch. Yeah, dude. I picked up a beer bottle with my butt cheeks. <laughs> and yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, that was the same night. We we had this little this little uh, like a Halloween decoration that was wearing a shirt from they they just went on tour. His other band went on tour with, oh, with yeah. someone. He was like wearing one of their shirts and we stuck a cigarette butt in his mouth. We gave him we put like beer bottle caps and put them in his eyes, I think. I don't know. His name was Bonewall Jackson. <laughs> no, he'll play, he plays airsoft, Danny goes rock climbing, I play hockey, Chris plays D&D. Yeah, we're, we're shooting for May 30th. We were just saying, like, oh, we'll just have the show like two weeks after it comes out and we'll be fine. And then, COVID. I was planning on getting my career you know, everything lined up and literally that's yeah. yeah, everyone's just like, all right, 2020, I'm getting my shit together. Hello, well, no. Uh, May 30th is what we're looking at. Work in progress, EP. My test, my mind is a mess, but I'm a work in progress. So please give me grace. I don't deserve. You only see the process. There is nothing stopping us from finally putting this thing out, and then boom, Other fucking the pandemic. Yeah. Like, like, we have everything going for us. We have an EP about to drop, just got a van. Bam. Just kick right in the nads. Man. Thanks, uh, universe. Kick us right in the nads. Right in the knockers. Yep. Yeah, I know. Right in the knockers, bud. You guys are still a work in progress, I guess. No, no.